Hey my creators, welcome back. Let's go to the craft room and get to crafting. All right, we are going to take a Dollar Tree sign. I'm just using a Christmas sign that I had left over. You could use any Dollar Tree sign. And we are gonna take our Waverly chalk paint and I'm using the color ink. You can use whatever color matches your decor. I just thought black would go well with the little white pieces of metal that we're gonna put on it so that it would kind of pop. And don't forget to do the edges because you will be able to see those when those are hanging on the wall. Now I'm going to take my straight edge. You could take a piece of cardboard, a piece of paper, a ruler, whatever. And I've got a white paint pen and that paint pen is just from Walmart, nothing fancy and expensive. And where each of those notches are on this board is where I'm going to draw a line. I want to give it the look of shiplap so we're going for the look of boards across through there. And then we will go back and distress it because what is a little farmhouse without distressing, right? So I'm drawing that on in white and I didn't want it to be so stark white. So I'm going to go back in and just kind of dirty it up a little. So I'm taking my black chalk paint that I just used and a really stiff bristled brush and I'm getting just a little bit of paint on there, not a lot, and then I'm just going over those lines. Like I said, that just kind of dirties it up a little, and now I'm taking the silver lining chalk paint, and on the same brush, I did not clean the brush or anything, I'm going to take what's on the lid, and I'm just going to kind of get just a little bit on that brush again, and go over it, just kind of dirty it up a little. Then I'm taking a little bit more, and we are gonna go around the edges and just kind of barely kiss the edge with the paintbrush and that will give it that aged look, like it's been outside for many, many years. These little signs were in the outdoor section at Dollar General and they were only a dollar each and they were actually metal and I was like, how can I pass this up? These are so cute. So I thought what we will do is take them off of that little stake that's for your yard and don't throw that away because you can always use it later in a DIY. That's my motto anyways. And I'm going to take both of those off of their stakes and then we are literally just going to glue these down to those signs and we're going to add a cute little hanger and it is so cute and so simple. You guys can do this, I promise. I used hot glue on that. You could also use E6000 if you wanted, super glue, whatever kind of glue you had at home. Um, but the hot glue worked just fine. Look how cute those look. Now we are going to take, this is the same jute twine that I cut off at the beginning and I only cut one of the little knots off so that I would still have quite a bit. And I'm taking just regular scotch tape and I'm wrapping it around the end that doesn't have the knot on it anymore. And that way I can create a needle point, kind of, so that I can poke it through the wood beads. These wood beads I just got on Amazon. You could also use the ones from the Dollar Tree and just paint them. I'm just twisting the tape and that way it gives me a sharper point. And then I want the knot on the front of the sign, so I pushed it through that way, and then I'm just loading beads on. I put four of the smaller beads, and then one medium-sized bead, and then four more smaller, because I wanted a little bit of, like, that texture in the beads. Um, you can't tell a huge difference, but you live and you learn. Then I poked it back through and tied a little knot before I took the tape off, and that way I had a little bit more length on my rope. And then once I tighten it up, I just pull that tape off and then trim off the end so that it matches the other. And that's it on these. Look how easy and how cute. You could give these as gifts or anything. I mean, they're adorable and so easy. And make sure you guys listen to what I'm about to say because I'm inviting you to a little challenge that I'm going to be hosting and I would love it if you guys would join me.
All right, I wanted to hop in real quick and just say, hooray! I have gotten to a thousand followers on Instagram and I'm now over 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I want to send out a big thank you guys so much for adding to my little creative family. I also wanted to invite you guys, this is kind of just an open invite to join me on a challenge that I'm going to be hosting every single month. So it is called the Chic for Cheap DIY Challenge. And so by that, I mean you just need to create something stylish for your home as cheap as possible. It can be under $10, it can be under $15, it can be under $2. So just make sure you include how much you spent to make it and where you came up with the inspiration for it. So was it just some crazy thought you had in your mind or did you go to Pinterest and you saw something cute and you thought, I can make that. So make sure in your video that you let everyone know that the host is Christy Creates and that you will link my channel in your description box and that the co-host this month will be Crafting with Maria and make sure you link her channel in your description box as well. And then once I post the link to the playlist, then you can add your video to the playlist and then everybody can see it there. So make sure that you announce that as well, that your link to the playlist will be in the description box. And just so you can plan for the future, if you wanna join in next time, I will host the Chic for Cheap DIY Challenge every month and it will be on the first Monday of the month and we will upload at 1 p.m. Eastern. So on this project I got these little charcuterie boards at Hobby Lobby. They were $3.99 but I used a 50% coupon so they were $2 and then I'm using these little boxes that you see at Dollar Tree and I'm taking the drawers out and I'm just going to use the empty shell of the box and I'm going to glue all three of them together. You could do more than three, you could do less than three. I just thought three looked good, but you know, do what makes your heart happy. So once I put some wood glue, and that's just wood glue that I got at the Dollar Tree, and then I'm also putting a little bit of hot glue just to give that quick hold, and then I'm clipping them together just to kind of help me hold it until it dries just a little bit. And then I'm going to take, these are just regular paint stir sticks. I think they were 98 cents at Lowe's for a package of 10. And I'm gonna cut them down so that they fit across my three boxes. And I was going for a crepe sort of look for this. So that's why I went over this. You wouldn't have to do this step if you didn't want to. I just wanted it to kind of sort of look like a crepe if that makes sense, I hope it does. So I'm gonna take my wood glue and then I'm also gonna use a little bit of hot glue just to give that quick hold. And in the places that I'm putting the hot glue, I'm not putting wood glue. I found that it doesn't stick as well if you do both in the same spot. So I kind of put a little bit of wood glue and then in between a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm gonna glue the rest of those down. I make sure to start at the top because those are a little bit longer than the three boxes are, which is going to be fine because you're not going to see the underneath part. So it actually gave me a little bit extra height. So I'm just showing you kind of what the look is. Like I said, it gives you kind of that crate or faux board look. Now I'm gonna put, do the same, put some wood glue and some hot glue and glue the ends on. And now I'm taking a large popsicle stick and I'm cutting it down and again, this is just going toward that crate look that I was going for. Plus it helped cover it up the ends where there was that little indention and that way it doesn't look so messy. It looks a little more high end. Here is the Crafter Square dowels from the Dollar Tree and they actually fit perfectly. Like it looked like I had drilled the hole specifically for this dowel. That's how perfect it fit. So I put it in there and I actually wanted a little bit of overhang. You could cut that off if you did not like that look. Then I put just a little bit of hot glue around and then kind of wiped it with my finger. And then I actually went back and put a little bit of um, wood glue as well. I'm taking some chalk paint. This was a dark gray that I had. I wanted like a dark gray look for it. 
gave it a coat of paint all over. This is what it looks like once I'm done. And it is so cute. Like this is all I did with this one. I thought it would be cute. If you were having a barbecue, you could put your utensils in it. Like you could do so much with it. What do you guys think? I just wanna quickly give a shout out to my daughter. I'm a 40 something year old woman who is not technical at all. And she always helps me edit my videos. So thank you, Kira. I love you. We are gonna make some little succulent wall hangings and you can use pie pans or cake pans, either one. And then I'm gonna use some of these chopping mats that are also from the Dollar Tree, of course. And I'm taking my sanding sponge and I'm sanding both of these things down just to give it something that it can kind of grip with the glue to. And I'm kind of drawing out where I want this to go and then cutting it out with scissors. Then I'm doing a second one because I'm gonna do a set of two of these. This is the Quick Hold E6000. You could use regular E6000. You could use super glue. I'm also gonna use some hot glue just to give it that quick hold and make sure you kind of wipe it down after you've sanded it. And then I'm gonna sporadically put the E6000 and the hot glue and then I'm gonna stick it down. Then I'm gonna move on to the next one and do the same thing. Just kind of re-sticking it to make sure it's stuck down really well. The E6000 does stick better than the hot glue, I will tell you that. So if you want to use more of the E6000 than the hot glue. And I'm going to galvanize these, like faux galvanize. I'm going to spray them with a silver metallic spray paint. And now I'm going in with, that is a really, really firm brush. And I'm going in with a super dark gray paint. You can use acrylic, you can use chalk. I'm using chalk for mine and I'll just kind of show you I'm just stippling all over literally the whole entire thing the only part I didn't do was the back that will be flat against the wall and then after I do the dark gray then I'm gonna go in with a white color and you want a little bit of that silver metallic to shine through but you're going to cover everything pretty well. Like I said, just leave a few spots here and there that are shining through and cover it in the gray and the white. And it's gonna give you that galvanized look for free, just for paint. <laughs> just make sure that you hold on the back side of that plastic part while you're doing this so you don't push the glue loose. I'm just kind of touching up any spots that I thought didn't look perfect, but the more imperfect, the better, because that's how galvanized metal is. And you could even go in with a rust color and rust it up a little bit if you wanted. And that's how dirty your hands will get. What do you guys think? Which one of these was your favorite? Make sure you tell me in the comments down below, guys. I just want to thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching my video today. I love when you come hang out with me. And again, hooray for a thousand on Instagram and seven thousand on YouTube. I love each and every one of you guys. And I would love it if you would just say hi in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't.